Hello there, good day. In this video, we are going to talk about condition variables. This is last in the series of my video which I have created for multi-threading in C++. This is last because we need to know all other things before we can even try this. So what are condition variables? These are, some these are the mechanisms which is used as a signal, kind of signaling between threads. Uh, let's understand why and where we can use it. Uh, one thing we have to remember is that it can only be used along with mutex. You cannot use without mutex. So let's start with a thread function which takes mutex as a argument. Uh, so let me go and create thread function. And I'm passing mutex as a reference. Okay. And I'll join the thread. This is done and I have to create a mutex mtx. So in the thread function, I want to take the mutex as soon as the thread function gets uh, started. So I'll use a unique lock for this and lock with mutex. This is done. So what I will do now is that in the main thread, I'll sleep uh, for let's say five seconds. So the code looked like this, thread is created, this guy took the mutex, I am waiting for 5 seconds, by the time this guy will come out and thread will be completed and join will, uh, join will execute and end of code should be printed. So let me go ahead and compile this code, I have compiled and I am running this code. So should be done in 5 seconds and it's done. Okay. Now what happens, uh, I mean, now let's go to the situation where we have some variable of type boolean which is true, which is defined true by default. I'm not encouraging use of glo global variables, so just for example, I'm showing this. So here, for some reason, this thread need, needs to wait till the var is actually becomes false. Once it becomes false, it can actually do something, but not before that. And this variable var becomes false after 5 seconds in the main thread. So, I can again go ahead and compile the code. And if I run it again, uh, nothing will change as such. Only thing will change that it would, this thread will be alive for 5 seconds before uh, it gets var gets uh, false or it gets uh, close let's let's check end of thread for example let me go ahead and compile the code clear it and run so this end of thread should be printed after five seconds and it touch end of thread so uh you'll at the face of it nothing seems uh, wrong or bad about it but let's increase it to 15 seconds for example and we'll see a dif difference when we run the top command along with it to see the CPU usage. So no, now I have seen a dot out and I am writing top. See a dot out is actually taking close to 100% of the CPU. Just see this till the time it executes. Okay, uh, maybe we can reduce it for 10 seconds and see it again. Say a dot out for close to 100% CPU. So this thread takes a lot of CPU which is bad because it's just waiting for something and it should not do that. It is bad for code and bad for overall program. So condition variable comes in these kind of situations. So let's get rid of this and come up with something similar to the what we achieved over here okay let me not just do it so let me create a condition variable convar okay and pass it via reference to the thread convar take it in the thread condition variable present convar 
Now this loop while loop can be replaced with something called condition variable sorry this con var dot weight and it takes the unique log. So we cannot use log card over here because con condition variable weight takes unique log. Okay. So it will actually wait over here. Now instead of saying var equal to false after 5 seconds, we can say con var dot notify all. So, so this guy will notify this wait variable which will allow it to proceed further. So let's compile this code once again and let's run it uh, for a time being. Let's do it for only for 5 seconds. So end of thread should be printed after 5 seconds. Yes and end of code printed after all. Right. So you'll say what is the difference between these uh, two things. The difference is that when I, I am just use it for 15 seconds and show it to you that a dot out take just negligible amount of CPU because it's just waiting for some condition to be true. Okay, it's it's drastically different than what 100% CPU is being taken by, um, by by the previous case. Okay, now so get rid of this. Now one thing about uh, this is that when we uh, when we call this uh, condition variable weight, this mutex mtx is released, okay, which means uh, this not only waits but also releases the mutex at this point of time, which means if I want to acquire this mutex over here, I can do that, okay. So let's let's see how. So for notifying all, let me use something like log card over here. LG with mutex and noti notify all. So here you see that this, mut this mutex is already locked over here, okay, which is locked. Now I am waiting over here. Ideally, in normal cases, we cannot lock this mutex again over here because it's already locked by this thread and it's not unlocked yet. But this uh, this thing, this weight unlocks this because of which I'll be able to lock it over here and notify all will send the notification back here. But before proceeding again after getting the notification from weight, the con bar reacquires the lock this lock before proceeding further so let's see how it works so as of now it should not make any difference so i'll compile and i'll do a dot out so i got it after five, 15 seconds i should have keep keep it change it to five but let's see anyway i've started uh, so it it it's happened so you can see that i i can actually lock the thread uh, using the mutex which is unlocked by this guy okay so basically wait what it does is that it unlocks this mutex and wait for signal once the signal is received it relocks the mutex and proceed proceed further that's why you have seen, you might have um, might have seen or will see lots of usage of condition variables with mutex. Okay, it is extremely flexible, important, and useful for any multi-threaded program in C++. So that's the way this condition variable works. There are other variants like wait for where you can specify the time, or there is a notify different notify for single notification of single thread. These variants are available, but most of the time you will be using notify all and wait. Okay. So that's all about condition variables. I hope, um, I mean, it was clear. If you have any questions or com uh, comments, let, let, let me know in the comment section. I'll try to answer those. Thanks a lot. Thanks for watching. Please do not forget to subscribe. Thank you. Thanks again. Bye.